Hey, everybody. Welcome to David Heavener Live. I'm David Heavener, and I'm live. Uh, I'm live for Jesus. It's good to have you uh, with me. It's good to be with you every Monday night, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I, I got my uh, co-pilot here, Mike Spaulding. Pastor Mike, are you with me? Hi, Brother David. Uh, it's good to, see, good to hear your voice. I, I bring Pastor Mike on as my co-pilot because, as you guys know, we deal with things that churches either won't deal with uh, because they're too afraid or, I hate to say it, but maybe too ignorant. We deal with a demonic influence. We deal with healings. Uh, we deal with uh, program multiples. We deal with abuse. And so I bring Pastor Mike on because we have been uh, ha having so much um, uh, turbulence uh, from the dark side that I've gotten knocked off at times. And so Mike's there to to guide the plane uh, if I get knocked off. Right, Mike? Amen, brother. Yes, amen. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, hey, Mike's got a new show on David Heavener TV. Uh, if you go to davidheavener.tv, it's the Bible and Prayer channel. Uh, he reads scripture, prays, and folks, you've got to see his show. So if you haven't signed up to David Heavener TV, I want you to sign up uh, and uh, catch Pastor Mike's uh, show. Uh, so, Pastor... Um, we're going to be talking tonight about generational curses. Uh, do you believe in generational curses? Generational curse. You know, that's one of those issues, David. You've got a clear dividing line within the body of Christ. Some say yay, some say nay, yeah. uh, generational curses. And then and, and the folks that say nay... Uh, have scripture to back that up, and the folks that say yay have their scripture to back that up. Okay. Here's, here, here's my response to your question directly. Okay. The Lord will not punish you for the sins of someone else. Okay. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that there won't be consequences in your life as a result of someone else's sin. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand. Yep. Uh, however, however, we and, and I know you agree with this. We both agree on demonic influence. OK, yes. Demonic presence. And uh, and I want to read something to you in just a moment. But first, I want to say this is that at we when we grow up as children, uh, we have these 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 dark energies or we have the the devil energies or the God energies around us. You know, we have angels and we have demons that want to take us down growing up in environments and families, especially, you know, with where you have a lot of addictions and you have uh, uh, abuse in the family. Don't you agree that these demons can can get upon a young person or an old person and stay with them? through their life until they're delivered? Yes, yes, okay. that, yes, that, and that is the result of doors being opened by someone else. Oh, okay, all right. So I want to talk to you about something. You know, um, there's a, th have you heard of a thing called ep epigenetics, epigenetics? Yes. Uh, it's, they've, science has now, uh, uh, well, they've confessed that generational curses are real, like according to this article, okay? If you ever wondered why some patterns in your family history seem to re be reoccurring in your own life, strongholds such as anxiety, uh, poverty, illness, addictions, to name a few, and they're talking about this, uh, this epi epigenetics, and according to this, now I'm gonna massacre it, but it's, it's, in, the, it's in the genes, and, uh, it, it, they've discovered that it's passed on from, uh, uh, from generation to generation. So they've now said that they do believe that it is a generational, and we say curse, they, they don't say curse, they just say it's been passed on by generations. What, what do you say about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, to, to tie the spiritual and the scientific together, yeah. I think we agree, David, that something happens to a a person um, at at the DNA level. It it can be corrupted and changed by by demon possession 
by dabbling in demonic activities. Mm -hmm. And when your DNA changes, guess what? You're going to pass that down to your progeny. Oh, amen. You know, and a lot of times things start in the womb, you know, and I'm talking good things. You can talk to the baby in the womb. Yep. Uh, they play music for the baby. So why would we think, Pastor Mike, that when there's negativity, that when the baby's in the womb and, uh, and the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the mother's drinking alcohol or, or the father's into pornography or they're, they're yelling at one another, why would we think this energy, these demons are not, uh, are not affecting this baby, right? Basic, basic human nature, David. We want to take credit for the good, but we don't want to take the blame for the bad. Amen. Amen. I want to go to John 9, uh, 2 and 3. And I want to read this. And I know, Pastor, people pull this up and they use this. This is probably one of the verses you're talking about. But I want to bring it up for a reason. John 9, uh, verse 2 and verse 3. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, talking to uh, his disciples, asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Um, now, they asked this question because evidently, they were taught or they had seen that uh, a, a, at least a generation back uh, did something that affected the, uh, the following generation, right? For them to say this? Yeah, well, the Jewish, Jewish theology of the day, uh, mm -hmm. David, taught mm -hmm. this, that if you were born with a defect or a handicap or experienced some kind of uh, major a negative issue of life that it was because you were a sinner. You did something to deserve God's wrath. Oh, That's how they oh, thought. Okay, but the thing is, though, Jesus didn't correct them. As a matter of fact, he went on to say, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Now, I I'm not saying one or the other, but it would seem to me that if they were wrong, Jesus would say, hang on, guys. I, I, I've had enough of this, you know, you, this, this nonsense about because his parents sinned. Uh, so that just leads me to think something was there. Right. I mean, well, uh, Jesus of all people understood clearly the demonic realm, the spiritual yeah. realm and, and the attacks that were yeah. going on. So, I mean, I've made this statement before in the days of Jesus the the demonic activity spiritual warfare that was going on was was at a never before seen level as in the days wow. jesus walked yeah well i want to go to deuteronomy 5 9 uh deuteronomy 5 9 um it says you you, uh, you shall not bow down to them or worship them for i the lord your god am a jealous god punishing the children for the sin of the parents punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Somewhere, something is passed down here in this, in this verse. Can you give us a little more, inform uh, give us some enlightenment on this? Yeah, I think that's clearly speaking about the, the consequences of uh, what happens when you deliberately sin and reject God, that's going to be passed down. The impact, the consequences yeah. of that's going to be passed down to your own children. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen parents who don't love God, who don't believe in God, and I've seen their children, and they're, uh, they're godless, and it's a sad situation. So yes. it's passed down from generation to generation. Yes. Um, I, someone asked me, uh, David, what's your mission statement for the show? And I had to really... Uh, stop and think, you know, what's my mission statement? Uh, and the Lord gave me this. I, I want to pull it up. And I really believe, and Pastor, you've been with me for quite some time on the show, and I want to see if you would agree with this. But I feel like God gave me the scripture um, for this gathering here. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. Uh, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and of the needy. Um, this, I feel like, is our mission statement for this show, and I'll tell you why. 
And number nine, when it talks about defend the rights of the poor and the needy, <clears throat> and I, I'd like to talk about this. A lot of people think, oh, this is the poor on the street, or this is the homeless, or we, we have to feed this person. I'm not saying it may not apply to that at certain times, but it says defend the rights of the poor and the needy. That touched my heart, Pastor, because we, at the gathering here, we stand up for the rights of children. Children that are being abused all over the world right now, we come against the, the demons uh, that dare to touch our children. We come against the demon of murder that dares to, to, to murder our innocent babies. We stand up for the rights of those children, of the poor and the needy. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And of course, uh, you know, I use the New American Standard, David, and it says in, in, in that verse, open your mouth for the mute. So those without a voice. And I, I can't think of anyone that that better describes than the preborn human uh, that, that have no voice for the rights. of the, So open your mouth and, and, and verse nine, David, open your mouth, judge righteously. Yes. Judge yes. Judge righteously. So yeah. we are to be setting Ooh. the record straight and addressing evil Ooh. and correcting it with biblical truth. Ooh. Good point. In other words, when we're, even when we're in church, let's say after church lets out and we're talking to people, isn't it our responsibility if the pastor doesn't do it to, to if we're in a conversation with somebody and, and they're trying to avoid the issue of abortion, isn't our responsibility to stand up and say, let me tell you something. It is clearly a sin. God is clearly against this. Um, uh, or, or if we know there's sexual uh, uh, promiscuity going on in the church, isn't it up to us to bring this into the light, to judge righteously? Ab absolutely it is, David. And I think that's one reason why much of the church today is anemic and, and basically uh, useless because there is sin in the midst and God will yeah. not use a dirty, sinful vessel. Oh, amen. I tell you, um, we've got next week a great uh, show I wanted to mention. We're uh, covering the option. There's going to be a big get together in Atlanta, Georgia with the actors and the crew. And uh, and I hope you're going to be with me, Pastor, because we're going to show on next week's broadcast the new uh, uh, episode called The Option it's 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 about the unborn. It's about murdering the babies. And I'm so excited about that. So you guys make sure you tune in next Monday uh, for that. And also, um, I wanted to mention to you guys that um, it, we have out there prayer warriors. OK, and, and they're on their knees right now praying for for you and for me and, and for the guest for Jared, for Pastor Mike, they, they're on their knees crying out to God for protection, uh, for wisdom, that the Holy Spirit will move. And I, I want to thank God right now for those prayer warriors that are out there. I want to, I, I, I thank you, I bless you, and I thank God for you. And I want to thank each and every person out there that shows up here every Monday night. I know that you're busy, and I know there's other things you could be doing. But God has led you here, and I consider that a great responsibility. I don't take this lightly. I don't. I, I thank you for it. I bless you. And if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here, obviously. But, folks, we have to stand up for truth. We can no longer play church. We can no longer go to church for one hour a day uh, on Sunday maybe on Wednesday, and then, and then poli be politically correct the re rest of the week. We must be spiritually correct. In this day and time, it is so critical that we meet together as we do so we can encourage one another, so we can expose the demons. You know, the demons get nervous when we meet every Monday night, Eastern Standard Time. They shake because we expose them. And my next guest, when we come back, has exposed the dark side like you wouldn't believe. Um, she is a victim 
of mental, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse from the time she was a very small child. She discovered that this abuse didn't start with her, that it was carried, on, carried back for many, many generations. It was a generational curse. And it went on into her family, but by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, she was able to break it. When we come back, we're going to be talking to uh, Ruth Alamada. Uh, I want you to stay with me. God bless you. How would you like to be part of an exciting new faith-based television series? Hey everybody, I'm David Heavener and I'm making The Last Evangelist. I call it CSI meets the book of Revelation. We're in the end times and people need to hear the truth. I'm asking you to partner with me. Go to lastevangelist.com, sign the newsletter. If God touches your heart, become a partner. Hey everybody, welcome to David Heavener TV. Seven channels of truth. And what are the seven channels of truth? Well, in today's world where there's so much chaos and so much turmoil, and it seems the church has dropped the ball, we pick up on it. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for signing up. And God bless you. Academy, if you don't want to do it, give it as a gift to somebody. So good to be with you. God bless you. And I can't wait to see you next Monday. Take care.